Hello and welcome to Baiju's. I'm here today to talk to you about the CBSE Grade 10 board paper. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well, sometimes students get a little bit hung up on this being a really, really important exam. I'm sure you'll do fine. We're here to help you. What's the first thing? Well, how do you prepare for any exam? Specifically this exam, but you can apply these steps to literally all kinds of exams. The first thing is have a plan of action. Remember, preparing for any big exam is more of a marathon than a sprint. Don't start one week before the actual test. I'm sure you won't do this. You're a good student, but you need to have a plan. And then you need to stick to the syllabus book, especially board exams, okay? They never ask you anything outside. What brings us to the next idea is, well, last year papers. That is, I cannot stress on this enough. Go through it. Two things, okay? This will help you with. One, it'll get you familiarized with the pattern and the time that you have to take the paper. And secondly, this is the most important part. Some questions are very similar, okay? Maybe a question that was asked three, four years back, a, a twisted version of the same question may be asked now. So, hey, that really, really would help you out. You need to have an idea of an, the, all the important formulae, okay? List it down, have a cheat sheet, like a flashcard, yeah? That really helps. <laughs> and ace the exam. Easy five points, right? I know, easier said than done. I have complete confidence and faith in you that you're going to be able to do this. And the rest, we are here with. On the actual exam day, what do you do? Well, same idea, you follow a set of steps. Everything is about the process. First is read the instructions carefully. What kind of instructions? We'll, we'll show you, we'll show you very soon. Go through all the questions quickly. Form a plan, you know, okay, I'm really confident about this part. Maybe I really like biology, I'm gonna do that part. Mm. But sometimes you don't have that option of subject-wise picking up stuff. You do have the option of picking up things section-wise, okay? That is what I would suggest. Pick a section that you like, do that first. Try and keep the numbers in a particular order. What do I mean? If you're solving question five, do six and seven right after that. Don't do seven, six, five, although you can, but it's a little bit difficult to keep track of this in your mind. And if you miss out a particular number, you miss an entire question. So that's a little risky. So as I said, <laughs> process is king. Be careful about what you have to do and have a bit of practice with this will really help. Most importantly, pay attention to keywords. Okay, the boards, they give you marks for certain words being mentioned. And your teachers will definitely have taught you this. Anyway, we'll look at a few questions and it'll give you ideas what, what do I mean by keywords if you don't know this. And lastly, solve each question part by part. Usually some questions, the ones that have more marks will have like part A, part B, part C. They make your life easy for you. You know what to do. But sometimes things, they may have these parts written in a sentence. You just need to identify, oh, okay, this is the first part. This is the second part. That's it. So if you break anything down into smaller individual tiny bits, everything becomes easy, at least on your mind. Sure, you got to practice and all that's there. So what does a board paper actually look like? You can check this out on our website also. This is from there, yeah, from the Baiju's website. This is the board paper from, uh, when is it? Ah, 2019, hmm, pretty recent, all right. Oh, some things haven't changed, huh? The board exam still start at 10.30 a.m. Yeah, you got to be there a little bit early. And it's a science paper that we are talking about. You can see the total number of marks here as well. You, the instruction that I was talking about, that's most important. Samanya Nirdesh, general instructions, right? Focus on this. Although instructions are probably going to be the same year on year, but read this, okay? You don't want to be caught in a trap where something changes and you did not read it. This happened to me in my JE exam. I remember this very, very well. I didn't read something and that led to a big blunder. Luckily in the boards, these kind of things don't happen, but be careful. You must read the set of instructions carefully. So what do we have? Let's go through them one by one. Okay, this is going to have five sections, okay? All right. Remember, these are sections, not subjects. All of them are, all the questions are compulsory. And then you have details on the number of marks. Okay. One marks, two marks, three marks, so on and so forth. And luckily, the boards themselves tell you how many words you need to have these in. Okay. We'll go over this one by one in detail. What do I mean by number of words? Are you going to sit and count? Okay. I've got five, oh, seven. Mm, we have better ways for you. I think you know this already. Yeah. But let's do this. Okay. One mark questions. Things are, you know, they're usually very easy. You either know it or you don't. There's no way of conceptualizing something on the spot, okay? If you've studied it, you know it, you'll be able to answer it right away. So give it an average time of one minute. Or we just say two. You know, we don't want to give you a, a time of one minute. That tick, tick, one, tick, tick, two, you start counting. You don't have that. Let's put the minimum time at two minutes. Why is time important? You'll see. It adds up. It all adds up, okay? We'll talk about that towards the end, about time. What's the word limit? <laughs> have one word or a sentence, okay? This is very straightforward. And uh, what do you need to do? Look, 
the right keyword okay that needs to be done and these are the ones that can are usually very easy so focus on getting these right okay you have to write a very very precise answer don't write stories here there are some parts where you may have to write stories. we'll get to that what happens in a two mark question okay which is the next section section b you have about four minutes okay this is the idea that we are giving you of, of course some questions you may spend more time on you can make up on that on the other sections okay we are giving you an idea of the proposed time that you should spend an average time and there's no one size fits all okay if in a in a, in a two mark question you're like i i got it done in two minutes awesome you have more time for other questions maybe you took six seven minutes to figure out something or you did something wrong and while checking you realize oh god i need to do this again don't worry about time then okay the time idea is all this is for you to prepare when you're in the exam don't do bit size timing see ah, i've got two minutes i've got yeah, this is four minutes don't do that do it section wise see how much time you've taken so you get an idea okay i've got this much time left that part's really important keeping track of time okay but how to do it is section by section don't do it question by question these ideas are mainly for you to know while you're preparing it which is right now okay if you're seeing this video one day before the exam <laughs> skip over to the <laughs> next parts okay i'll tell you which part so the word limit is 30 to 40 words we've got some words here again what do we do here i'll talk, talk to you about the words very soon how do you count the number of words well you got to explain in brief okay and it says over here four to five lines okay okay four to five lines precise words concise words as usual and formula if needed now let's talk about the elephant in the room the lines thing look the number of lines may be different for you and me okay number of words it's not up for discussion it's a fixed number of words right now if i write a line what's, what's, what, what, what's the word it's a quick brown fox is that right the one that has all the english alphabets uh, jumps over the lazy dog or something like that yeah so i can maybe fit in what like seven i think seven words in one line that's my handwriting maybe your handwriting can fit more words or fewer words so figure this out okay how many approximately how many words are in one line okay then you get an idea okay maybe five lines uh, corresponds to about 30 words or 40 words that's the idea you need to do okay count the number of lines in the exam don't sit and count words don't do that that's <laughs> that's not a productive exercise i know that sometimes when you tell students not to do something and they really want to do it sure knock yourself out do it as much as you like right now okay for fun or for whatever reason in the exam your focus is on the question and mentioning the keywords formula and those ideas okay on to the next session section which is the three mark questions remember these are the five sections that we showed you in that science paper okay we're just going through them one by one in detail this information was there but we're just going through in some detail as to what we are supposed to do over here the time we suggest you take about five to six minutes on these questions okay cool what's the word limit it's about 50 to 70 words again that was given in the this thing in the uh, instruction sheet itself now here now these questions are slightly longer so you need to describe the process and if there is some logical reasoning behind things okay do that you will be like no you know what some subjects or some questions are very theoretical but i think i think you can draw a sort of a map in your mind to connect theoretical ideas as well to make a story okay and these stories make a lot of sense not one of those fiction kind of stories you know you can connect the dots and you can have this logical reasoning even for very very theoretical questions and as much as possible use figures and examples okay this is this was that about three uh, three mark questions i was going to say three word question like you know that doesn't make sense <laughs> number of lines you know how to relate that to the number of words so a few more lines how may, how much ever they may be for you remember this is personalized to you okay do not compare that oh, man, that that guy my, my friend has does this in five words for five lines it doesn't matter make sure your handwriting is legible okay that's important <laughs> i'm going to mention that later on in the session also but an important part about this practice thing is to make sure that what you're writing is correct is sure but also the examiner can read what you're writing for me that was a big problem i'll tell you hands down okay even i think recently only recently i've learned how to write legibly because i've got to make sure that you understand <laughs> what i'm writing but when i was a student oh god my handwriting was like yeah i couldn't understand what i wrote after some time so it took some getting used to but in the board paper you got to make sure that you write things nicely and i'm not saying make it beautiful but it should be legible yeah somebody should somebody else should be able to read it and even you should be able to read it if you see it after a month okay all right on to five mark questions what are these about look you take about eight to ten minutes okay 
on these questions. This is, this is, it's okay. It seems like a lot of time, right? 10 minutes out of a three hour exam. It's all right. Don't worry about that. Word limit is given to you over here. Now here, just need to be careful. It's like we are adding on steps from the previous one itself, right? Three, mark, three marker also had the process idea. It also had formula and equation. It also had diagrams. What is extra over here is make bullet points. Just like the, like, like the ones you see over here. Yeah, these are bullet points. Even though you have, uh, you know, a lot of words that you can fit in, which may, I think it may translate to an entire page, okay? Or maybe like a, almost 80% of a page. Even then, if you are in points, it's easier for the teacher to read, the examiner to read. And also for you to check, which is also equally important, I think, you know, sure, you've done everything, but you, you should have time to check everything you've done as well. That's why I'm giving you some sort of a time idea. We'll tie it up neatly to show you that, look, it's possible to finish all of this in about two and a half hours, not necessarily the whole three hours. And then you have 15, 20 minutes to revise. Um, <laughs> you may be tempted to take a nap in that time, but sure, do that if you have time left over after the revision. Okay, revision is extremely important. Lastly, the last section, which is a little strange if you ask me, right? Because they don't give you a number of words. They say, you know, write briefly. A little confusing. <laughs> the instructions are not that clear, but it's okay. You know, you, we can still give it the leftover time that we think you should spend on each question. Answer in brief. So I think treat it like the other two mark question. And if there are some sort of a formula, some sort of formulae, please mention those as well. Now, now, out of these, you know, sections, five sections, they're divided interestingly into five units. Specifically, this paper I'm talking about, okay? This is the weight weightage given to each unit in this paper specifically. What, what do you mean by units? These units are practically just the subjects, more or less, okay? You can say that, ah, one subject, one of this unit, it translates to maybe biology. Two of these units could translate to physics. We'll look at that in detail. So that's what we've designed for you. This is a general weightage. We're going to get into the detail of the individual units. We'll solve this unit-wise, give you an idea of, because, you know, section-wise, you got, you got, you know, number of words and et cetera, et cetera. But the way you answer a question in physics may be slightly different from what you do in biology. So that's why we're going to do this discussion unit-wise. But before we get onto that, extremely important idea. Some portion has been deleted for the current year, which is 2021. We should go over that. Specifically, unit one, which is primarily chemistry, it has, it does not have metallurgy, does not have corrosion, it doesn't have oh, a lot of organic chemistry has been skipped. Carbon and its compounds, functional groups, chemical properties, um, ethanol, ethanoic acid, soaps and detergents. Oh man, I really like soaps and detergents. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually a very interesting thing from the point of view of chemistry. But hey, it's not there right now. What else is deleted? Okay, in unit two, that's practically biology. The entire chapter on uh, control and coordination in animals and plants is not there. Evolution has been deleted from heredity and evolution. What about the third? I think the th third and four sections, third and four units, not sections, third and four units are basically physics here. Oh, the whole of human eye is gone. Yeah. No, not the whole part. I think the second half, yeah, you've got the functioning and defects of human eye, application of spherical mirrors and lenses. If you have glasses, you'll appreciate this a lot. If not, you're like, hmm, I don't care so much, but this is very interesting. You know, read up on this in your free time, the idea of hypermetropia and all of that. I, I found it very fascinating when I was in school. Anyway, the next unit, it doesn't have these portions. It doesn't have electric generators, AC and DC, and domestic electric circuits. Last part, ah, we don't have sources of energy either. Okay, so what do we have? Let's get started with the first unit right now. Chemical substances nature and behavior. What's this about? This is primarily chemistry, right? You can see on your screen, we've made a nice chart for you to show you what percentage of each uh, of the chemistry chapters were asked in this paper, right? You got a little bit of acids and bases, actually mostly acids and bases, a lot of acids and bases and salts. And then you have almost equal, yeah, you have equal weightages of these three chapters, carbonous compounds, periodic classification of elements and chemical reactions and equations. And you have a little bit of metals and non-metals as well. Now, the reason why we are doing this subject-wise is because most of the time students read these things subject-wise. You study chemistry sub separately, you sp uh, study biology separately, and so on and so forth. In the paper, <laughs> the sections have all things jumbled up. Okay, so we look at the questions that came from these subjects in those sections. When I say subjects, I mean units. So this is unit one. 
So we'll quickly go over what this has. Okay, what exactly is chemical reaction the equation is all about? Firstly, you have well chemical reactions. Yeah, they are combining of uh, different kinds of elements. Yeah. Now you need to balance these first as a first step, and you can classify them into different kinds of reactions. There's so many colorful things given over here. Interestingly, a single type of reaction can a single reaction can be classified under two of them. Like right off the bat, I can see that single displacement and redox, it could be the same reaction. Okay, so they could ask you a question where they say this is one reaction given to you. How many of you know this does it fall in? That could come up too. Anyway. What else is here? Let's look at the next chapter. You have acids, bases, and salts. This was mostly very, very heavily tested, right? 28% you saw from there. So just general idea of what's it, what, what is an acid, what is the base, the general test for it. You have the litmus test, uh, phenolphthalein, methyl orange, so on and so forth. The idea of pH, okay? And the fact that it's a log scale, okay? That's extremely important. The idea of what is neutral, uh, what is a neutral solution, and hence neutralization. What is left? I think just a couple of more chapters. Uh, Non-metals and metals here, not very tested, but pretty heavy, I think, theory-wise. Yeah, you got so many different points, but I think you can relate a lot of this to the periodic table itself. Okay, now, yeah, you, we usually study this with different kind of reactions with water, oxygen, and so on and so forth. Yeah, this is very doable, but a lot of theory. You've got the whole reactivity series, yeah, uh, but I think the reactivity series you guys have been studying this from so many years that you'll generally know what it's all about. All right, and lastly, carbon and its compounds. Hmm. Now this, in 11th and 12th, you have an entire branch, like organic chemistry, around 30% of the whole syllabus or is, is, you know, this, basically just this. But anyway, not scaring you, a lot of this was deleted. What is this all about? The fact that carbon forms, forms covalent compounds. Okay, that is the central idea. And then, yeah, it bonds with itself, catenation, so on and so forth. You've got nomenclature and a lot of general formula. These are the different families of hydrocarbons. All right. So that's what this is all about. I think there's one more idea. Yeah. Periodic classification of elements. Okay. This, <laughs> I know, should have started with this, right? Because this is how chemistry evolved. Yeah. It took about 200 years for all of this to come up. Come up. Okay. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but a lot of trends here. Yeah. You can, I think, revise the entire chapter with these kind of just this one figure of the periodic table and then you know scribble over it okay this is the, this order this is that order electronegativity uh, atomic size so many things just in that one figure yeah, we, anyway all that is there in bio class by the way we give you interesting uh, sessions okay let's look at one question that came in this this is from section b what is section b this is a basically a two marker okay two marker which is i think what about uh, 40 words yeah so you need to do this in brief What's the question? Name the acid present in ant sting and give its chemical formula. Also give its common method to get relief from the discomfort caused by the ant sting. The reason I'm going over this part quickly is, look, we're not going to solve the entire paper in detail, but we need to focus on the keywords over here. What is being asked for? You're talking about the ant sting, okay? And the particular compound in there, which is this over here, and that's the formula. So there you go. I think you're done with one part of this question. You probably get one marks half for each of these things. And then what is the method of relief? Use the idea of neutralization. Apply a mild base such as baking soda or soap. You can check out the actual marking scheme in uh, the board, you know, where they give you these things as well. You know, the actual marking scheme, half mark for this, one mark for this, so on and so forth. But important idea, well, actually, interestingly, and thing, if you read up, you'll see that even a little bit of lemon also helps. So a lot of household uh, <laughs> remedies are there. Yeah, this base idea, something we studied, okay, ah, neutralization, so on and all of that. But uh, yeah, there are other answers that also work for this, <laughs> uh, which was something I found out recently. I thought that, yeah, it's just chemistry, but there's so much more, right? Okay. Anyway, here's another question from chemistry that came in this paper. This is from section C, three marks, okay, 50 to 70 words. What was the approach here? Firstly, it describes the process, okay. Here, interestingly, a process being tested in an industrial process used for the manufacture of sodium hydroxide, a gas A is formed as a byproduct. Now, the gas A reacts with lime water to give compound B, which is used as a bleaching agent in the chemical industry, identify A and B. Also give chemical equation of the reactions involved. Again, I went over that quickly because you need to identify the important things and they're highlighted here, okay? So nice white highlight, uh, white and bold, all of these ideas. Yeah, these are the keywords in the question that you need to identify. Once you have done that, you know what the process is going to be, okay? So, 
what are we doing firstly you have a reaction okay nacl plus h2o will give this because that's what's given to you okay sodium hydroxide and a is formed but from what okay from these two together and then that a well that reacts with coh hold twice what is coh hold twice that's lime water right here okay that gives you b so this question actually i think is a little bit on the complicated side because you've got a lot going on okay if you know this process if you know that this reaction exists then you're you're in you're in the green zone okay you're safe but if you don't know this if you do not know what process is used for the manufacture of sodium things get a little bit difficult but if you do know that ah bleaching agent okay cao cl2 that would work maybe you could backtrack it so slightly difficult question i think unless you know the theory so this is one type of uh, you know this is one type of question that could be asked in chemistry as well now this one next question in the next section this is a five marker uh, looks scary right <laughs> just 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 looking at this like oh my god it's got so much text but no it's all right we can do this look it's got multiple things you've got this this the atomic radius valency metalloid most electropositive i told you need to have a mental idea of the periodic table not the whole table but these are common elements okay this is among the first 10 not even the first 20 first 10 elements you need to know where these lie on the periodic table and then you'll be able to answer all these questions look atomic radius has some trends okay and in this case luckily they're all in the same period so you know that atomic radius decreases the reason behind this is a little tricky we won't discuss that right now yeah as to why this happens but this is theory this is direct theory and similarly you can then go ahead and you know you can answer this and you can go ahead and figure out valency also based on the fact that they are on the same period remember period is the row that's why i'm doing this hand motion okay over here all right the maximum valency would be somewhere in the middle always it, it increases and falls i'm going to quickly go over this question because the goal here is not to sit and solve all these questions but to give an idea as to what to do luckily you have this is a five marker you have five points life couldn't be easier in theory in theory if you know the periodic table if you know where these lie easy five marks okay otherwise this could get scary i agree i i admit yeah if this if you're not of that fond of chemistry and you have decided to skip this chapter for some reason i would not i would advise against that but if you do then yeah you're, you're out of luck so uh, generally i would suggest i know this is a little difficult but go through the whole syllabus that's why i said it's a marathon you can't do things in one week so even if you're looking at this as the video is released yeah you still have a few months you can do all of this and still do very well in the test anyway this is the answer here for metalloid most electropositive would be you know lithium because yeah, it's there the starting of the period i'm going to quickly go on to the next one now this one the last question i agree it's a uh, yeah six and eight it could you could have sometimes you could have more than one compound form like say if it were nitrogen and oxygen you could have more than one compound form but in this case it's not the case so there you go co and co2 both of them could form right so anyway yeah trick question a little bit of a tricky question now the last one this was easy this is very easy this is very similar to the other two marker but you don't have this is one of the answer and brief thing that i told you that you can't have a what you call it uh, the word limit was not given in the paper itself, but I think we'll do this one. This is directly from the metals and non-metals chapter. Yeah, you've got zinc granules, freshly prepared FeSO4. Okay, I gave you the answer because it's in my head, right? Ferrous sulfate, ferrous is 2 plus sulfate. That's in my mind. Give the reason for your answer and you just need to know this equation. That's it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I know I make it look so simple. <laughs> so that was it about this unit, which is practically chemistry. All right, the next unit, world of living. Check it out. This is basically biology. This is the weightage that you have of different chapters. It's mostly heredity and evolution, 35%, very, very heavy weightage. Reproduction has a good percentage as well. Life processes and then control and coordination. What are they all about? Life processes. Look at the body as a machine. Sure, it's got life, but the body is a machine. Plants or animals, humans, either way. What's, what, what do you need for a machine to survive? Fuel, yeah? you need to give it nutrition and then that nutrition needs to burn. <laughs> the fuel needs to burn <laughs> to produce energy, but the nutrition also kind of burns, right? Well, not technically burns, but there's respiration, produces energy, right? That energy goes to all different parts of the body, whether it's a plant or a human, transportation, and lastly, what you don't need, you throw out, excretion, right? Just like, just like a machine. So 
form these maps in your head. This will make biology so much easier. You know, it seems like a lot of theory, a lot of things to mug, but it's not like that. It's a nice story weave together so beautifully, okay? Sure, there are some words that are a little bit complicated, but if you understand the Latin meaning behind it, life becomes very easy. The word roots. Okay. All right. What's the next chapter? Contour coordination? I know it's not there right now, but we'll go over this very quickly. Plants and humans, well, they have some sort of chemical coordination. Yeah, the right amount of chemicals, specifically hormones, that help, uh, that tell the body what to do. Yeah, something like signals. In humans, they are very pronounced, okay? The endocrine system and the nervous system, plants have different kinds of hormones. But knowing about these really helps you identify some sorts of, uh, sometimes things don't work out very well for the human body, okay? Specifically in the nervous system and the endocrine system. If you identify the issue, only then can you sort it. Um, it's very difficult to do to do anything about such from very, very serious diseases like bipolar disorder, unless you're able to figure out that ah, something is wrong with this chemical coordination. Anyway. Yeah, it sucks that it's not there this year. Anyway, another chapter, life processes. Oh no, before we go to life processes. Reproduction, there are two kinds, right? Asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, I think you'll see this a lot. Fission is not the whole nuclear thing. It's just fission is just breaking apart, okay? Amoeba, whenever <laughs> you see the image of a big bang and you know, David Attenborough's voice and all of that, you see two, you know, one thing becoming two. That's all that is about. So try and form some sort of a picture about all of these things, okay? Diagrams are really important in all of these processes. And, oh, I really like vegetative propagation, okay? Why? Because it's sexual. It is reproduction without any sexual organs. So it's the trees, the, the roots, and the stems that can actually have offspring. And you have examples of all of these right here. Sexual reproduction in plants and humans, that's extremely important. Remember, diagrams, they are your best friend in biology, right? Make them, label them, you'll get most of the marks right then and there. And the diagram will actually help you with the theory as well. Now, plants are very interesting, right? They have some plants that have just the female uh, reproductive, reproductive system. Some of them just have the male reproductive system. Some have both. Need to know the diagrams. And humans, well, sperms fertilize eggs, form zygotes, miracle of life. Lastly, on to heredity and evolution. What is this about? Look, I know the evolution part's not there right now, so we won't talk about that in so much detail, but genes, yeah, literally what makes you you, the traits which some of them are dominant and recessive. Recessive means that may skip a generation and so on and so forth. Dominant is like, ah, you know, that really fits there. Now, sex determination, that happens through chromosomes. You know this, right? Women have X and X and men have XY. And depending on which ones, you know, the, the baby also gets the sex determination based on these chromosomes. You also have the men, you have Mendel's laws of inheritance, the ideas of, you know, the colors, eyes, the colors of eyes and stuff, so on and so forth. All right. That was a bit of theory about biology. Let's look at a question from which section is this? This one's from section C. Or section C. Remember, three mark question. Okay, approximately 50 words, five to six lines, depending on your handwriting, okay? What's the question? Right, two water conducting tissues present in plants. How does water enter continuously into xylem vessel? Hmm, interesting questions. Explain why plants have low energy needs as compared to animals. I think, this is just me, maybe the markings seem different, but I think that part A must be two marks and part B must be one mark because it has two parts, right? They're very clearly, right? Part A. So, identifying that is very important. And uh, yeah, water conducting tissues, if you know this, you'll know for sure, trachea and vessels. But be careful. A lot of times, whenever students read something, do it, you know, tissues and all that, they say, ah, xylem phloem. <laughs> no, those not vascular tissues. We are talking about ones that conduct water. Sure, there are four kinds of xylem, but only two of them conduct water. So be careful about this. Okay. And the next part, although we are not mentioning it, it is a pressure differential. There's a suction that happens. Okay. You know, there's some evaporation from the stomata of the leaves. And because of that, the roots have, you know, there's a pressure difference and the roots are able to suck water up. That's how this happens as well. The last part I think is easy. So we won't spend too much time on this. Low energy needs as compared to animals. Plants are fixed. They don't have to move around. They don't have to run. They don't go around jogging. So, and they get all their food fried from the roots and from the air. So not much to do. Us, on the other hand, <laughs> we, are, we are pretty active, right? Uh, that's a boon and a bane at the same time. If you look at efficiency wise, we sleep for like one third of our lives. <laughs> I sleep a little bit more than that. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. But yeah, it's 
quite doable. Yeah, this idea of low energy needs because they're stationary, they don't have to move and they get all their, uh, you know, their needs and nutrition from just the air and the roots in the soil. All right. That was section C. Now, here's the big one. You've got a five marker. Mm. Section D. This is one you need to take your time on. Okay, Eight to ten minutes, maybe even more if you've saved time on the one and two markers. Right. So, you need to distinguish between cross-pollination and self-pollination over here. Mention the site and product of fertilization in a flower. Oh, a lot of things. Draw the label diagram of a pistil showing the following parts. Sigma style, ovary, female germ cell. Now, won't go into too much detail about this, but it's very clear you need to draw a diagram. The important idea is, what's the order? Let's see. Let's see what's the order of things. That's what confused me in biodiagrams. So, cross-pollination and self-pollination, as the name suggests, self needs to have both the, you know, male and reproductive parts in the same flower and crosses well could be others yeah different flower that's it the sites are given to you and this is the diagram this is luckily it's in the same order yeah stigma style ovary female germ cell so make sure that you're good at the diagram we need to know what happens in each of the, every one of these so this becomes a fire marker i know i have skipped a lot of ideas over here as to what's happening inside here what's the seed what's the fruit so on and so forth but this one diagram should give you a schematic of what's happening and you can write a little bit more based on this. Okay. Another biology question from the last part. Now, this is interesting. A student observed a permanent slide showing asexual reproduction in Hydra. Draw label diagram in proper sequence of observations that must have been made by the student. Name the process of the reproduction also. Name the process, doable, right? Hydra, budding, yeah. But the diagram, be careful about this. This is important. And you need to label these parts as well. You know, there's a small bud and all of that. Answer is budding. <laughs> you know how I would draw Hydra? You know, this is a very weird way of doing it, maybe. But I just draw inverted ways. That's it. Vas, vas, sorry. Yeah. And then funky hair. And there you go. That's Hydra. So figure out, yeah, I'm sure you're better at drawing than I am than what I just did. But figure out quick hacks, okay? And then you can beautify diagrams and label them and, and all of that later on. So that's what the world of living was all about. On to the next section. All right. The next unit is natural phenomena and effects of current. Now, this is just physics. Yeah, you see the weightage over here. Oh, nothing. No questions on human and color for what? Interesting. Light, reflection and refraction, mostly there. Magnetic effects of current. Yeah, and electricity as well. Let's look at these individual chapters. Light, reflection, refraction, all those lens, mirror, formulae, all of that. Be careful about the, what's the signs, right? we have that in detail how to figure out the signs and all of that these are the formulae that you use for a mirror and for a lens okay slightly different yeah you've got the laws of refraction laws of reflection incidence angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection so on and so forth here is a sign convention i was talking to you this is interesting yeah you've got the pole on one side you've got positive on the other side you've got negative if you go above it's positive and if you go below it's negative this is the height basically so be careful about the signs that's the most important thing over here and then you have so many different cases yeah, of concave, convex, uh, mirrors and <laughs> lenses, the image formation, all that. Don't try to mug them, solve a lot of questions, it's just math, okay? A lot of interesting math. Hmm, what's next? Human eye, okay? Some parts of this, not in 2021, right? So, what is the human eye in the colorful world all about? Look, the eye, <laughs> yeah, what makes it up? I know this looks like a crossover between uh, bio and physics and it's exactly that. Yeah, so a lot of interesting things here, a lot of uh, ideas about how the eye works. And yeah, you've got the least distance of vision, so that's why you shouldn't keep things too close to you when you read it. It really gives you a headache. I don't know how the AR things want to work out, you know. Maybe they'll they'll figure this out. I mean, yeah, that's why I guess the AR goggles are a little big. Probably, I don't know much about this. Read about it, pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, anyway, this, this session is focused on the board paper. Let's talk about that. Okay, so yeah, a lot of things happen in the atmosphere as well. You've got scattering of light, tinder effect, the color of sky, why is, the, why is the sky blue? This question being asked, I don't know, how many years and probably when you started doing this in fifth or sixth grade, they'll ask you this question. Here's the answer, okay? <laughs> the atmospheric refraction is all about the twinkling of stars and seemingly time travel, right? <laughs> You've got the sun, uh, you see the sun eight minutes early, eight minutes late, all of that. You see it for a longer time when it's such setting, then it's already set. All those ideas are over here, okay? Electricity, oof, this part, hmm, pretty strong stuff. Uh, most of electrical engineering that comes later on, entire branch of engineering is based on this small, tiny chapter, okay? You've got 
Where's that? Where's Ohm's law? I'm looking for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, right in the middle. How could I? Be? Like right there. I was like looking at the sides. Okay, you've got the idea of power. What is voltage? And also that look, anything where current passes through is heating that happens. A lot of interesting theory over here. Okay, then the idea of this resistivity and so on and so forth. So a lot of interesting things, but very very a little heavy theoretically, I would say, because you've got all these you know things to tie up, and you've also got numericals on these things. So. I know, I, 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 uh, I empathize with you if you think that you know, this is a little bit difficult. But I think it can be done with a bit of practice like anything else. Remember, marathon, not a sprint. Don't try and do it in one night. Not possible. Right. Magnetic effects of current. What's that all about? Look, any magnet will produce an effect of electricity. I was going to say electrical field, but we are not so sure about that right now. Right. So, magnets produce electricity. Electricity produce magnetic effect. Okay. Both things are there always together, yeah, electromagnetic radiation, etc, etc. So, so many things to do in higher grades. But right now, the two things you need to focus on are generators and where's the motor? Okay, motors and generators. And generators are two kinds. They're alternating current, direct current, the massive fight that broke out between Tesla and uh, Edison. Yeah, who's supposed to be bulb and all that. But not, a, not a great guy. Anyway, you've got the left-hand rule and the right-hand rule. I'm going to put the pen down and show this to you, but I, I'm afraid I drop it. So, I'm just going to keep this here. Yeah, okay. The left hand rule, which would be on the right part of your screen, gets confusing. Pick up your, you know, your own left hand <laughs> and you'll be able to figure out the direction. Look, I want to mention this specifically. The index finger is always, what is it? It's always magnetic field. Okay, the middle finger is always current and the thumb is always the direction of motion. You remember one, you'll figure out the other one out. Hands, I'm saying, yeah. Left hand is for motor, okay. Electricity produces some sort of motion. Okay, motor. Generator, what is generator? The other way around. You move something because of, and in the presence of a magnet, and electricity is being produced. For that, you use the right hand rule. So be careful about this. Okay, what works well? Fleming, crazy guy. He figured out these two rules, which are like, <laughs> anyway. So I went a little bit slow there, gave you a bit of theory because, yeah, this, sometimes students forget these ideas, okay, which ones were. Anyway, on to some questions. Yeah, that's what you're here for. If the potential, this is the first one, first section, section A, should be an easy one, right? Potential difference, two ends of a conductor, five volts, current is 0 0.2. What's the resistance? Ah, I know this, five into 0 0.2, nah, it's five by 0 0.2. So you see where you could go wrong if you did this in a hurry. So these are easy marks, okay? Please get them. Hence the drama. <laughs> Use Ohm's law, write it down slowly, substitute, and you get the resistance to be 25 ohms. Okay. Don't do what I did initially. Say, ah, we'll one apply it and do that. Easy marks. Make sure you get them. Okay. Next question from another section. What is the principle of electric motor? State the rule which is applied to determine the direction of force experienced by a current kinetic conductor when kept in a magnetic field. Hmm. Okay. Motor. Once you figure out what is a motor, everything else you'll manage. I'm sure. But this is section B. So, yeah. You need to identify, you know, how many marks it's for, what's the number of words, etc., etc. So, here, look, the idea for motor is that I am passing current because of which there's some motion that's happening. Okay, the left hand rule works over here. Just that. Once you get that, then you know what's happening. Ah, okay, index finger is magnetic field. This one is current. This is motion. Okay, I know that my left hand was on the right side of your screen. So, pick out your own left hand. That's why I keep saying this and figure this out. Okay. Ideas about mirrors. Another section. You'll have questions from all sections in this. Okay. You've got a focal length. You've got a distance uh, that you should place for a 4 centimeter tall object. This is the height. Forms an image at a distance of 30 centimeters from the mirror. Calculate the size of the image formed. Now, this question, I have some concern about this. It's doable. Sure, you've got the mirror formula. You can get this. Right. But... Where do you place the image, right? You've got the object. Mm, what is in the mirror? No, you got to figure out the where the object is placed and you have where the image is. Now, here's the concern, okay? You've got the formula. I'm sure you manage this. You need to be careful about signs, right? So, this is a... What kind of mirror was this? Just go back there. It's a concave mirror, okay? Which looks like this. Okay. Let me... <laughs> even a convex mirror looks like that. But let me just shade that so to show that this is concave, right? Cave, vex is outside. Yeah, okay, cool. I just got that mental picture. You should do that too, you know, figure out, make sure that you're always right about this. Okay, put in stuff here. 
I, I know we, we said we're not going to solve things, but the reason I'm putting this is, look, I'm assuming that a real image is formed. If you had a virtual image, you would also get a different answer. That's why I said this question, I don't like it so much. Those questions should be very clear. They cannot, should not have two different, uh, you know, interpretations. And in this one, I think it could. But most of the answer keys that we looked at in this case, they assumed that it was a real image and this was done over here. But I think personally, you know, if, if the question was framed like this, even a, even a uh, what do you call it, a virtual image should work. Yeah, it could be 30 centimeters this way also. But anyway, right now, that's the idea. And you put in, plug in the magnification idea. Remember, magnification is not just negative V by U, but also the height of the image by the object. I didn't, you, know, you put that in there and then you get the height to be this. Cool. All right. This was the answer for this. Quickly moving on to the next question, which is from the next section, you know, the five marker. The behemoth, the big one here. You need to compare the power used in two ohms register in each of the following circuits. Now, this looks scary, right? To begin with, why? Because there's so much to do. You've got one set of registers in series, one set of registers in parallel, and like, oh God, there's so much to do. But no, as usual, break up something that looks complex into smaller bits that you can, you know, identify and solve slowly but surely. So, what do we do over here? Look, the series one is very doable. Okay, find out the total resistance. Okay, the equivalent resistance, you have the voltage, you get current. Okay, so then once you get current, you get power by I square R, yeah, heating effect of current and all of that. So some answer is there over here. Don't worry about what the answer is. I'm sure you'll manage this. Now in this case, in this case, you'll be like, oh God, I've got to do so much over here. First find equivalent resistance and do that. No, I don't think you have to do that. Look, this is the trick over here. And this is what I think will save you some time. You need, you don't have to find net resistance here. Use the idea that in, you know, what is this? It's parallel, right? Resistor than parallel. In that case, the voltage is going to be the same in both of these resistors. Power is what? V squared by R. If I have the resistor, if I have the resistance of the resistor, I have the voltage, power simply V squared by R. And interestingly, you get the same value, but that's not so important. The process is important. You see, identifying this trick over here, I think was crucial in making sure that you don't spend crazy amounts of time on this. Okay, here's another one. I like graphs. I love graphs. And this graph over here, is I versus V interesting? So this is experiment. You need to study the dependence of current I. And this is not the entire question. Yeah? This is kind of big. So we just split this into a couple of parts. Look, this is the first part of this question. What does this depict about the dependence, blah, blah? It's a straight line. And you know this, this is Ohm's law, right? You do this. So again, you need to link what the question is saying. This seems like a just a two mark question, but you need to spend more than the stipulated time. I told you, right? Ah, maybe two mark question, you spend four. Maybe you may spend six or seven minutes on this. That's okay. Not a problem. This first part is okay. But just identifying what you need to do uh, may take some students some time. It's all right. So you make up for time somewhere else if you need to spend more time on this. If you know, if you like graphs, you get this quickly. Awesome. That's great too. Anyway. So from here, hmm, what do we need to do? All right. So we've got V equals to IR. And at this point, what do you do? You can get the resistance at this maximum point here, right? I think that's that's what's given over here. Yeah. Now, you need to also find out the current that flows through the resistor when the potential difference is 2.5 volts. And once you do that, look, the resistor, you get the resistance to be 10 ohms over here from here. Okay. Does that make sense? Let's see. Firstly, this part was necessary for that. Okay. Hold on. I'm just going back there. The resistance was 10 ohms. We've calculated that over here. Once we do that, then we can get the current over here. Cool. Because what you have is resistance to be constant. Okay. V is equal to IR. If R is constant, then V will be directly proportional to I. That's the idea we used. And hence, this makes sense. Which why I said sometimes this may take, some students may take some more time to figure this out. Okay. At first, you need to find the resistance and then you need to do this. If you practice a lot of questions, just you'll do this right away. All right. That's all I had from physics natural phenomena and all that. Okay, on to the last bit, natural resources. Now, what is this all about? Look, this unit, unit five, has source of energy, our environment and sustainable management of natural resources. Mostly our environment was tested in this test. So we'll look at that first, 2019, right? You've got the ecosystem. It has some components which are biotic and abiotic, biotic living, abiotic non-living factors, right? That make it up. You've got a food chain and a web of sorts. Yeah, you've got all kind of uh, things being eaten and eating other things. <laughs> we have massive impact on the environment and it's mostly negative, the depletion of the ozone layer, scary stuff. 
we also talk about waste generation which is biodegradable and non biodegradable waste there okay cool then depending on what you got to do next we can look at the sustainable management of natural resources you got the five hours right Ref refuse to use that much you can reduce reuse repurpose and recycle i know there are three and then you can also get five out of that there are usually just three of them right anyway you've got forests you've got uh, water and you've got coal and petroleum now i'm going to go into detail just letting the theory up onto the screen for you you can go through this i know there's so much to study so many stories i know i keep telling you, you can form a mind map do so many interesting things with it but after point you get a little bit uh, okay how much uh, maybe there's not so much roi return on investment you study so much but you don't get so many marks if you look at it that way yeah mm -hmm. but look at it from a point of view of learning yeah some things you do because they're enjoyable if you take it from that point of view i think you will like it because you're learning about real life skills here okay a lot of these ideas can and will be useful to you sure you may not go and build a dam but you'll know what's happening in case uh, one breaks and you you know stay updated with real life events anyway look at this first question from section a from this unit okay you need, need to write the major hazard of nuclear power generation look this is quite direct you've got environmental contamination and high risk of accidental leakage simple question simple answer right um I can go on for an hour talking about nuclear power generation. It's interesting, fascinating, and also pretty scary. Read up on it from pretty cool stuff. Next one from section C, what is food chain? Why is the flow of energy in the ecosystem unidirectional? Look, have this idea of a chain. A chain is in one direction only. A web, sure, it's got many, but a chain. Look, the amount of energy is just 10% is transferred from one to the other. Like, See, this dude eats plants, maybe 10,000, but it is only able to assimilate 1,000 calories of that. 100, 10. So it's 10% every single time. Okay, that's why it's in one direction. Uh, you don't have the plant eating a grasshopper or the grass eating a grasshopper. That's not how nature works. Anyway, <laughs> won't bore you with this. Look, with this, we've come to the end of all the different units. We've discussed it in some detail. Now, what I want to leave you with are some important stats if you want to have them. Look. The time limit that we gave for each section and hence we arrived at this nice beautiful number. I think it's uh, pretty accurate also. The actual time that you spend is 150 minutes which is about two and a half hours. You have a good half an hour to chill <laughs> which is basically revise and relax and do things in a calm and composed manner. Look, you've got 27 questions and I think and this is standard thing. This is not something that I think. It's, this is established that you can finish this in two and a half hours and that's important. Now, with that, we've come to the end of this discussion. Just some nice ideas to leave you with. What do you need to do on this or just before the exam? Day, yeah? Please don't study something new, something that, oh my God, I've got to do this in the night of the exam because otherwise I'll fail. No, take it easy. Okay, that's the most important thing. Your composure, that's the most important thing then. You, if you want, you could revise some specific set of notes. Yeah, of, and... The most important thing is eat well, eat something light. <laughs> Don't eat something too heavy so you're not able to sleep the whole night. That's a really bad state to be in. Been there. Yes. <laughs> Get proper sleep. Always. Always. That's a general thing. But especially before the night of exam, be in a state of mind where you're able to get a good night's sleep. That affects your thinking a lot in a positive way if you do so. Okay. Lastly, on the exam day. It's the D day. What are you going to do? Look. You need to firstly write down the answers depending on the marks that you have, okay? That's the first thing. That's why we gave you that whole theory about ah, two marks is, three marks is, four marks that five marks and so on and so forth. Don't get stuck on a particular question. If you do, it's okay. Yeah, move on. Realize that I'm getting stuck. So that's important. The realization that you're getting stuck is most important. Always keep an eye out for time, okay? Time is your biggest friend and all sometimes can also be your enemy if you don't manage it well. Lastly, make sure, this is the most important thing, make sure your handwriting is legible. Yeah, You don't have to beautify things and mark, you know, make some nice uh, use uh, tens of colors and all that, but make sure somebody else is also able to read it. That point is very close to my heart. <laughs> I've always had terrible handwriting growing up. So you take this from me. It really helps to have good handwriting. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the session. I'll see you around.